As a Salesforce consultant, I am often wearing different hats to fulfill many roles, whether I'm doing declarative admin work, inserting data, writing code, or making user documentation. I need the right tools for the job. Today, I wanna to walk you through the tools I use to help fulfill various tasks as a Salesforce consultant. Everyone needs a toolbox that they can rely on. I try a variety of tools that make my day-to-day -day more efficient. If these tools didn't exist, I would spend a lot more time doing the same task. Using these tools saved me hours of time, which is cost saving I can pass directly onto my clients. Additionally, all of these tools I use the free tier. Most of the time, these tools are either open source or their billing strategy targets larger organizations. If you don't know me, my name is Justin and I run a bespoke Salesforce consultancy. If you're looking for more info, check the links down below. The first tool I use is a Salesforce extension that has really grown on me, Salesforce Inspector Reloaded. This is a free open source Chrome extension that makes Salesforce admin work easier. Some of my favorite features include seeing API names of fields on the page layout, seeing all field data for a record, logging in as a given user and then being redirected to your current page, and an easy way of running SoQL to export data. This extension is a great way of assisting with day-to-day -day admin work in Salesforce. It is also a quick way of getting the essential information from the Salesforce UI to use. A lot of times companies come to me to get their data into Salesforce. I receive this data in many different forms, CSVs from trade shows, Excel sheets from third-party software, or even an SQL server. Additionally, I have requirements that simple reports don't work for exporting data. To import and export data, I am once again using Salesforce Inspector Reloaded. To export data, there is a data export feature. When using this, I can write SQL queries to get the exact data I need. Even the field suggester makes it easy to write SQL queries and use the correct fields. If I find myself using this query a lot, I can save it. This means that repeat data queries can be done with ease. And if I need to get the data outside of Salesforce, I can export it as a CSV or an Excel document. Switching to data imports, it depends on the data quality and data complexity. When possible, I use Excel to format the data, then import. This means using VLOOKUPs for relating records and other Excel tricks for formatting the data. For more complex mappings, I've found the best way is to write Python scripts. The general process is as follows. Use the pandas library to connect to the data source. Map the source data to the Salesforce fields. Import the data into Salesforce using the simple Salesforce library. This has the added benefit of repeatability. If the data source is live, I can rerun the script to capture new data. Or if additional mapping changes need to be made, it is a simple fix. I can change the script to the required data format, then run the script to update the existing data. By the way, if you are interested in more Salesforce content, hit subscribe. It helps me know to create more content just like this. To write code, I am using VS Code to streamline development. This, combined with the Salesforce CLI, seems to be the simplest option for Salesforce development. It is simple and effective. I can write Apex code and push directly to sandboxes. There is basic syntax highlighting and autocomplete for object fields and SOQL. I can also download existing code in the org using the package XML manifest. Additionally, the most community support is available anytime issues occur with these packages, which they will from time to time. In summary, downloading metadata and working with Salesforce components just works. You can run test classes, deploy code, and really do everything you need to do to run a Salesforce project within VS Code. While I try to keep everything as close to stock as possible, 
there are some customizations I've built. For tasks I find myself repeating, building scripts is a great way of solving this. Some of the customizations I have built include a snippets extension for boilerplate code, a repo template for starting new Salesforce clients, plugin for deleting excess logs, and GitHub actions for pushing metadata between environments. To dig deeper on the last point, GitHub actions are some of the highest ROI tools I've learned in the last year. Being able to completely replace change sets has increased speed of deployments. GitHub Actions is a scripting language that allows you to automate DevOps processes. You can use events in a Git repo, like opening a pull request or pushing a commit to trigger automation. From here, the automation like validating changes, building a change set and running code analysis can all be done automatically. My current workflow involves opening pull requests to stage changes, then merge the pull request to push to production. This has been a huge time saver for me. If you want to learn more about GitHub Actions in Salesforce, check out some of the videos that I made. I spend much of my development writing custom integrations. So many of the tools I use are tailored around helping me write these integrations. These next two tools I have featured before on my channel. The first tool is Postman. It is a visual REST client that allows you to build HTTP requests quickly. It is a great tool for assisting in building integrations. I'm able to get authentication running fast for any service, understand request and response data, and generate real data from a third-party service. This allows me to confirm API calls to a new service and turn them into Apex code. Another tool that speeds up integration development is JSON to Apex. This is a quick way of taking the JSON data and turning it into an Apex class. It is as simple as getting the JSON data from the REST endpoint, format the data to ensure simplicity, and generate and add the code to your project. It is a quick way of generating the necessary boilerplate Apex code. This way, I can turn Salesforce data into JSON or parse JSON data and write it to Salesforce. It also has the added benefit of generating test classes. This allows me to use the JSON string data and add it as response for my mock callouts. Another important piece of building out a solution is giving the required training and documentation to the client. I found one of the best ways of getting visual guides to my clients is Scribe. Scribe is a great way of recording your browser clicks and generating a nice PDF for clients. It is simple to use and very effective at its job. I find the free tier works great for this tool. If I need to send documentation on how to reset a user's password, it's simple. I can press record in the browser extension, then perform the task as usual. I can then edit the generated document, adding context as needed, or delete excess clicks to clarify the document. This can then be exported as a PDF and sent straight to the client. A simple yet effective tool. This has been way better than other user documentation tools. I prefer this over recording a video or even writing LaTeX documents. I hope this gives some insights into how I solve specific Salesforce problems. Do you have tools you like to use? Let me know by leaving them down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, YouTube thinks you'll like this next video.